Welcome back to Radio Free Butte Hold. I'm Bloody Doves, and today we're going to be talking uh, about a technical readout, or TRO. Specifically, we're going to talk about technical readout 3060. We're going to hit a few highlights of the TRO and just kind of go over it in general. Uh, before we get into that, though, be sure to like and subscribe to Radio Free Butte Hold. Maybe leave a comment if you're feeling froggy to let me know what units from TRO 3060 you are a big fan of. There will be some choices in here that are controversial, I'm sure. And, you know, maybe let me know what TRO you might want me to talk about next. Now, let's get into it. But before we get too into it, we have to ask the question, what is a TRO? A TRO, or Technical Readout, is a paperback or PDF book. Originally, they were paperback. You can get PDFs now. Released by the companies that have made, historically made Battletech, usually FASA and Catalyst Game Labs. Uh, and Technical Readouts uh, introduce new units to the setting. Uh, be they combat vehicles, such as tanks or VTOLs, or battle mechs, omni mechs, proto mechs, so on and so forth. Um, the idea with a TRO is it is a mostly fluff book. It is not really rules-centric. There are a few exceptions. We'll talk about that. And it's mostly just a fluff entry. Here's a bunch of new units. Check it out. Notably, TROs do not come with record sheets, which is the actual game piece required to play the game. You actually don't get record sheets with TROs. Uh, you have to get record sheets with record sheet products, which are different. And they're not really worth covering because record sheets have nothing to talk about. They are literally just a block of record sheets that go, here's this variant, here's this variant, here's this variant, with their printed sheets. Uh, so we're never going to talk about record sheet products. There's nothing to say about them. With a TRO entry, a TRO entry you know, in the TRO itself is two pages. On the left page, you have the name of the unit, um, it's like manufacturing information, like it's weapon loadout, and a lot of fluff about who made it, why they made it, what its performance is like, the background on the unit, sometimes some notable pilots, stuff like that. Some fluff intro information about it to tell you kind of about the unit. On the right side, of the, on the right page, you have a picture of the mech, usually drawn in some kind of pseudo line art style, you know, very black and, it's always black and white, a little stylized just to kind of give you a good look at it. And then there's a small block of text that just is the rough stats in a very not helpful way, just to kind of tell you what the stats are like, what the engine is, what the structure type, the armor type, the armor value, uh, the armor values in all the locations, that sort of, you know, where the weapons are located, that sort of thing. It's not in a way that you could use in-game as a, like in a Battletech tabletop game as a record sheet, but just kind of to give you an indication of what it has and where it has it. With Omnimex, it'll give you usually multiple configurations, kind of the default basic configs, like the A through you know D configs, the prime, the A, B, C, and D, stuff like that. Uh, and there you go. That's a that's a te technical readout. There's a lot of these. Notably, they tend to not cover just a specific year. So this is called TRO 3060, but the reality is it kind of covers a bit of a range of years, sort of before and after the year 3060. It doesn't cover exactly that year because there isn't a TRO for every individual year. For the 3060s, for that decade, there is TRO 3060 and there's TRO 3067. And I think that's it. Uh, the whole decade is covered in two books because they actually cover a range of years, you know. TRO 3067 is going to have stuff from 65 and also stuff from 69. You know, that kind of, it's got a range to it. And so TRO 3060 is the same. It's got stuff that comes out a little later and a little earlier. It just covers kind of that area of the timeline. Um, on the cover of TRO 3060 is a Hauptmann Omnimech blasting some Clan Protomex. We're going to talk about both of those things later. It's a pretty good art piece. If you want to see it, you can see it on Sarna. Uh, I'm sure that they have a picture of the cover of the book. It's actually pretty nice looking. A lot of TROs have really good cover art. It's kind of one of the places where you get a lot of that big, you know, cover art, uh, like splash art. It's really quite nice. So, some highlights from TRO 3060. Uh, TRO 3060 is split into five segments. Inner Sphere tanks, Clan tanks, Inner Sphere mechs, Clan mechs, and Clan proto mechs. We'll cover a couple of units from every section, and we'll also talk about proto mechs kind of more in general. Proto mechs are interesting, and they were introduced in this technical readout, so we'll talk about them a little more at the end. To start with, we're going to talk about Inner Sphere vehicles. Inner Sphere vehicles, I'm going to cover two vehicles here. Um, I'm going to talk first about one of my very favorites, the Hawk Moth Gunship. The Hawk Moth Gunship is a light VTOL. It's a helicopter. 
Uh, it's inspired by the Yellow Jacket VTOL, and it and when I say inspired by it, it explicitly calls out the Yellow Jacket in its fluff. The Yellow Jacket, if you're not familiar, is a VTOL that carries a Gauss rifle. And all it does is it zips around and shoots with a Gauss rifle from far away. This is very good, because it's fast, and Gauss rifles are deadly. It's a good... It's a good unit. The Hawk Moth goes, Hmm, what if we did a Yellow Jacket, but we made it more Merrick? Let's put a Light Gauss on it. And then they did that. <laughs> so it's a it's a helicopter, it's an 812 with a Light Gauss rifle. And also, 32 rounds of ammo. It has a full 2 tons of ammunition, which is just ridiculous it doesn't need it doesn't need two tons of ammunition but because it does have two tons you can just shoot on whatever numbers you have because you'll never ever ever run out of bullets which makes it kind of fun the hawk moth is actually i think the better vtol not because it's mechanically stronger it's not the yellow jacket is better but it's less annoying to play against yes it's still very fast and it has excellent range but the light gauss isn't dangerous enough to make it a must-kill unit, and to make it frustrating to play against. I like the Yellow Jacket, because it's, frankly, insane. It's a really, really good vehicle. But it's also frustrating to play with, because it can be hard to catch, especially for slow ground units. And the Gauss Rifle is just really good. And it can lead to this very frustrating experience, where the Yellow Jacket just skips away, and is very unpleasant to fight against. The Hawk Moth has that same play pattern, but because the Light Gauss just isn't as dangerous, it doesn't feel that bad. Which is a big which is a big deal. The other vehicle from the Inner Sphere section I want to talk about is the Chevalier Light Tank. This is I believe an old SLDF tank that Comstar and the World of Blake put into service. It's a light wheeled combat tank, and it's just kind of a personal favorite. Um, it's, first of all, it looks really cool. It's got six wheels, and it's got a real low slung, long appearance to it with a cool flat laser mounted turret, or turret mounted laser. It's a really, really cool looking tank. I really like it. Uh, and the thing is, it's not actually great at anything. It's good at a bunch of stuff, but it's not excellent at anything. It's got an ER large and two streak twos, which isn't the best firepower. It's just kind of fine. It's a 6.9, so it's not ridiculously fast, but it's also decently fast for a wheeled combat tank it's got pretty decent armor uh but it's not exceptional at that either but the chevalier is a tank that just kind of never let me down every time i use one i like it and it just sort of performs it's not threatening enough to be a must kill and it's not unthreatening enough to be irrelevant it's got an ear large and two streak twos which is enough firepower to like threaten stuff it's fast enough to get into trouble and fast enough to get away from it. It's wheeled so it can go through most terrain types. Like, you know, it's fine. It's fine. I like, you know, I personally really like units that are just kind of fine. I like units that are overlooked and underappreciated because they're not flashy. They just sort of do the job and they go home. I like that. I like those kinds of units and the Chevalier is one of them. You know, is it the best unit ever? No, not really, but I quite enjoy it. So I recommend you give it a shot. I think you might be surprised. From light, useful troopers to weird specialty tanks, we're going to flip over to the clan tanks. But the clan tanks, we got two to talk about here. One of which I've never used, but I like on paper, and the other of which is just a turbo meme, and we have to talk about it. The first tank is the Oro Heavy Tank. So full disclosure, I have never fielded one of these. I've never used one on table. However, it's a 4.6 tracked tank with a clan large pulse and a clan LB20, so like, how could I not love it? Uh, however, the Oro is very clearly an ambush predator because it has apocalyptically bad armor. The Oro is 60 tons, the Chevalier we just talked about is 35, and the Chevalier has almost exactly the same armor as the Oro. It's like a couple of points less, I think it's like half a ton lighter. It is very similar, and yeah, the Oro armor is just bad. It just doesn't have good armor. It's not good armor. However, if you hit somebody with it, you're going to mess their whole week up, because an LB-20 and an LPL is just a lot of gun. So, if you field one of these, 
be clever with it. Don't just like run it across the field at somebody. It will get picked apart and killed. So be careful with the Oro. From the Oro, we go to the Turbo Meme, which is the Mars Assault Vehicle. Okay, if you've never seen this thing, this is like the example of how disgusting tanks can be. Let me run you through the guns on this thing. On the standard Mars, it has, and it's all clan tech, an ER large laser, a Gauss rifle, an LB-10, three Artemis-enabled LR-15s, two Streak SRM-6s, two machine guns, and for defense it has an ECM suite. If it can see you, you are dead. <laughs> uh, if, if it can see you, you are done. At long range, it's only a Gauss, an ER large, and 45 LRMs. Up close, it mixes in two Streak 2s and an LB-10. And because it's a tank, it doesn't have heat. So it just mag dumps every turn forever. And because it's clan LRMs, they have no min range. So you, there's no safe distance to fight this thing. The only safe distance is being a different postcode. Like, there's no, there's no safe way to combat this, except maybe artillery. The Mars also has thick armor, and it can just... It just absolutely annihilates anything it gets into a fight with. The problem is that it's a 2-3, so it's it's the same speed as an Annihilator or an Urban Mech. So you really need to be careful with how you deploy it. However, I believe there is a XL Fusion version that has an XL engine and upgrades it to a 3-5, which makes it much more reasonable to get around. Also, for the record, just in case you don't know, XL engines on tanks are like completely free. Uh, tanks die to any location being destroyed anyway, so the fact that the engine is in the side torso is just like pretty close to doesn't matter i think for the crit tables it matters just a little bit but like it mostly doesn't matter um if you if you're making custom tanks put xl fusions on things it, they're they're good the mars is ridiculous get it play with it love it be mean to your friends <laughs> i take no responsibility if you are mean to your friends don't actually be mean to your friends anyway moving on to the mechs so it was hard to narrow the clan and IS mechs down to three picks each because there's a lot of really good designs in this TRO. But we'll start with the IS mechs and here we go. The first mech is the Blitzkrieg. When I was learning to play Battletech, I was taught a simple rule. The more Blitzkriegs there are in play, the more fun that game will be. And that rule has never failed. The Blitzkrieg is so much fun. It is a 7 with an Ultra 20 and just enough armor, ammo, and speed to make it work. Uh, it has no other guns. It has no arms. I mean, it has, like, arm locations, but there's nothing in them. Uh, and it looks super, super goofy. But that doesn't... None of that matters. Because all it does is it runs up, and it puts two Ultra 20 shots... It puts an Ultra 20 into your rear arc. That's all it does. It's all it wants to do. You have to play the mech with zero fear. If you play the mech with fear, you will die. And it will do nothing, and it will seem terrible. If you play the Blitzkrieg, play with absolutely no shame, no fear, and just go for it. If you've got a shot, just take it. Just go. Uh, it's not going to be alive long enough for any of this to matter, so just go. Just 100% pedal to the floor, tape the trigger down, just go. And you will have a fantastic time because it is a hilarious meme machine and I love everything about it. It also looks sweet. Goofy, but sweet. Speaking of goofy but sweet, we're going to move on to the probably controversial mech choice here, which is I love the Yeoman. I said it, I'll stand by it, I'll die on this hill, the Yeoman is fantastic. It's a stupid boombox with feet, but screw you, I love the damn thing. It's such a cool mech. It has, again, no arms, it's super dumb looking, but I love everything about it. It is so cool, and so fun, and I love it. And you should too. The Yeoman is actually very similar to the Blitzkrieg in that it only does one thing. Which is bring LRMs to the fight. It has no other weapons. It has two LRM-15s, two LRM-10s, and nothing else. Uh, it can't really punch because it doesn't have arms to punch with. All it can do up close is kick you. But that doesn't matter because 50 LRMs is actually a lot. Like 50 LRMs in the Inner Sphere is actually more than an Archer. Archers only have 220s and a lot of them drop down to 215s. When you get... Like, the the longbow has 50 total tubes. And the longbow is 25 tons heavier than this. The yeoman is 60 tons. Like, 50 tubes is a lot. And when you just vomit 50 tubes at people, eventually good things will start happening. Because that's a lot of missiles. You do have to keep it defended. 
And you do have to, like, keep a bodyguard around it, because anything that gets up close will just ruin its day completely. But, 50 missiles is a lot of missiles. So, give it a try. I think you'll be surprised. It looks silly, though I like it. But it is surprisingly good. I would recommend you give the Yeoman a chance. Same with the Blitzkrieg. Give the, give the silly mechs a chance and they will surprise you. There's a reason that they got made. The third mech from the industry we're going to talk about, and probably the most functional, uh, at least the least silly, is the Houtman. The Houtman is a Liren Omni mech. It's 90 or 95 tons. I think it's 95. And it's a simple design. It was based on roughly the Dire Wolf. And you can you can see the, the similarities in like the arm construction. It's a cool mech. I actually like it. The, Yeoman, the, the Houtman also has a really cool cigar. It's got an ER small mapped in the head and it is modeled on the mech as a cigar. You gotta keep that, by the way. I know it's an Omni mech, but you gotta keep the cigar. Always keep the cigar, the ER small cigar on the Houtman. Just do it. It's the law. But the Houtman is easily reconfigured because it's an Omni mech. It's a standard engine with case, so it's pretty durable. Uh, it's slow, but it's 95 tons, and 3.5 is perfectly fine at that tonnage and it's got long range weapons so just you know stomp forward and blast away that's a simple fun effective design it doesn't have a lot of fancy stuff going on but again i i like that it doesn't have anything fancy going on and again give it a try if you're playing lirans and you're playing in the era take a houtman in your force give it a shot i think you'll be surprised it's pretty effective moving on to clan mechs uh the three clan mechs here are two memes and one decent mech the first meme is the quad mech the stalking spider the stalking spider is it's a quad okay quads are weird i love it i actually have a mini a metal mini of the stalking spider uh in my collection i have it on my desk right now uh, it's posed on a jumping base with jump jet smoke coming out of the legs and torsos it's one of my very favorite minis especially because the guy who painted it for me i didn't ask him to do that he just did that for me kind of pro bono uh, which was extremely nice of him, and he didn't need to do. But I love it. I think it's a cool design. It's a, a heavy raider. It's a 585 with mask and an ERPPC and some lasers and I think two streak fours. Uh, it doesn't have the heat to fire everything, but it doesn't need it. So, you know, over the ground, it's got up to 10 hexes with mask. And in the air, it's got five jump. Five jump really redeems quad. Like, jump really redeems quads because it allows quads to change facing very easily, which is a thing that quads really desperately need. Uh, quads, if you're not familiar, have a lot of facing issues because they can't torso twist because they're a quad mech. They don't have a, tor they don't have a pelvis. Um, and so they can't torso twist their facing, so it's easy to kind of outmaneuver them. But with jump jets, that doesn't matter. Jump jets can just get around everything. And it helps the stalking spider be a very effective simple design i really recommend you give it a try it's good stuff the other meme mech is another quad uh, it's the fire scorpion the fire scorpion is a very limited design in that it's only fielded by the goliath scorpions because it's one of their totem mechs and it's also slow it's a four six and it's relatively short range because it's got an ultra 10 and an lb10 for firepower but the fire scorpion has hella good style and with an Ultra 10 and an LB 10, that's 30 points of damage it puts out. The Ultra 10 alone, if both shells hit, is a PSR. It actually hits really hard. It's a 4 6, so it's pretty slow, and you have to kind of think about it, and it's mostly used by garrison forces. But the Glass Corbins get huge style points, and it's actually pretty effective if you can get it into somebody. So, another mech I think you should actually give a shot to. I think it's, it's better than people think. The third clan mech I want to talk about is the Novacat, the Novacat Omni mech. So, while I was tempted to round out the clan section with a nod to the Thunder Stallion and just go all quad, there's a lot of quads in this TRO for the record, uh, I decided to go with the Novacat because I think the Novacat is actually very overlooked. The Novacat is a clan Novacat Omni mech that doesn't really excel in anything. It's actually very much like the Chevalier Light Tank, where it doesn't actually be good at anything. It's just kind of fine, but I like that because it's a mech that I've used before and it's never really let me down. Every time I see it on the battlefield, it does a good job. It does exactly what's asked of it and it does it without really complaint and it does a basically solid, good job. And I actually like that. I like mechs that just kind of show up and do their job and go home. I think those guys are the, the guys that 
deserve a lot more praise than they get. Everyone praises stuff like the Timberwolf, you know, which is flashy and sexy, and everyone loves that, but no one ever talks about the mechs that are just kind of doing their job, like the Thunderbolt. The Thunderbolt isn't sexy, and it doesn't win any awards, but the Thunderbolt is also really good, and it's a mech you can rely on, which is a mech that I like. The Nova Cat reminds me of the Thunderbolt in a lot of ways, in that it's a mech that you can just sort of rely on, and I like that. I recommend, again, you give it a try if you're playing with the Clan Nova Cat. Now, there is one more section to the book, called the, the Proto-Mech section. Proto-Mechs are weird and complicated. Uh, they honestly deserve their own episode, because Proto-Mechs are really unusual, and they don't really behave like mechs, and they don't really behave like vehicles. They kind of are very clearly doing their own thing. And giving you my favorites just wouldn't make a lot of sense in my opinion so i'm actually gonna just tell you that if you want to know more about protomex pick up a copy of tiro 3060 you can get it probably on dive, drive through rpg and just read the section so most tiros don't come with a lot of rule information but this one because it's introducing a new unit type includes all the rules for that unit type including construction rules which is kind of an interesting addition um so if you want to know more about Protomex. Just pick up the TRO and read it. If you do, one warning, the art on the Protomex is very, um, it's famously awkward and weird. Battletech art in general can be kind of awkward and weird, but like, the Protomex art is really awkward and weird. It's very, very strange. The story I have been told by people who have talked to the artist is that the artist was told, make them look like mythological monsters. And so the artist did, and turned them in as very exaggerated, very, you know, really overwrought looking mythological monsters. Like, one of them looks literally like a minotaur with a gun. Another one has an owl face, like with a beak and, and like wings, shoulders, and everything. Uh, the artist apparently was expecting the publisher to go, okay, these are good, I like this, I like that, and then send it back for revisions. That part never happened. They never got sent back for revision. They just got printed straight up. So there was no going back. They were pretty much just straight up first submissions. Here you go. Which is real weird. And not really the way they probably should have been done. But that's what we ended up getting. So if you go look at Tier 3060 for Protomax, be aware that the art is really something else. Just so you know. And with that, I think that's what we got. That's a nice, brief, 20-minute look at Tiro 3060 and the goodies contained within. There's actually a ton more mechs and tanks that we could talk about here. I could talk for another 20 minutes about all kinds of other stuff. But I think that's plenty for today. Give you a taste of it. So, until next time, uh, I've been Bloody Doves. This has been Radio Free Butthold. And until next time, live free, ride hard, and never trust Comstar, mech warriors. <laughs>